A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from. Enough about how awesome you are, back to the video. Welcome back. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at one of the new content examples that is available with Unreal Engine 5.1. And the one that we're going to check out is called Physics Control Component. And if you don't know how to reach this or get this, I'll show that in the end of the video. But essentially what we have here is access to a new component, which allows us to apply it to a static or a skeletal mesh. And then with that, we can make use of a few different things. We can have some more controls applied to different parts of it and have it react in different ways. And this in conjunction with, for, for example, physics allows us to get a very uh, believable animation as a result. So let's start it off, this off and uh, show you what I'm talking about. So if we go full screen, uh, here we have the first example. We have a box. We can see the box is teleporting around. The green box is actually the box that is uh, trying to be moved around and the edges are essentially its desired location. And as it is now, it's just being moved to the location that its edges are being placed. But if we move up to this uh, pedestal here, we can see that the edges are being moved around just like before but the box itself is being uh, translated to that position and it's being done in a soft way so if it encounters something on the way it will try to move around if it can or if it's completely in the way it will stop short of its actual wanted destination like there for example so that's one use of using uh, the component for static meshes and over here we have something very similar we have again the box with its edges being teleported around and it also has this tail. In this case, the box is determining where it's supposed to be and the tail is physically driven and will just follow along with all the rapid movements. However, if we walk up to this control, we can see that the box is now trying to translate into the position it wants and the tail is affecting that box location with its own physics. So they're working in conjunction here to create this effect. Moving on, what we have here is a soft skeletal mesh. And uh, essentially what this is, is this, there's a character which has the component on it, which allows it to react to the world with certain other objects in the world when it collides. And in this case, it's sort of like it's bumping into a pedestrian on the street or maybe accidentally walking into a lamppost or something like that. So this shows off how you can uh, make use of that kind of effect. And we can also walk up to this control and have it ragdoll and still interact with the, the objects in the world. So yeah, if you want to look into how that works, you can check out this specific example. Moving on, we have uh, where they're combining skeletal animation and procedural targets. This is essentially a way of, if we walk up to it, you can see that it has a animation to begin with that it's walking around with. But then uh, in addition, if we walk up here, it's going to be transposing on a, a procedural uh, noise effect, which allows it to blend within the noise and animation that it's actually trying to play, which gives this sort of electrocute effect for this character. Moving on, we have something that's probably among the coolest. You have this character which has components which are controlling a bunch of different things. Uh, the hands are in this animation are transfixed to the wheel and want to follow the, the stick shift. And you have the feet locked to the, uh, the static mesh as well. But the rest of the stuff is more or less fluid and soft. So if we activate this vehicle to, or this, supposed vehicle uh, to be something that's going off-road, you can see that it affects the animation and gives a much more believable result when it's blending between these two different things happening. So if this is of interest and something that you want to make use of, make sure to check out this specific example. Moving on, what we have next is hit reaction. And this is sort of how you can make use of uh, ragdolling with this to see uh, if you were to be shot by a bullet. Let's demonstrate by walking up here. So if I left click on some part now, he will get shot at that location. So if we shoot in the shoulder, 
you can see that he reacts like he was shot in the shoulder and then ragdolls out. And if we do it in the head, we get a different reaction like that. And we can shoot him in the leg and so on. So if ragdolling and hit reactions is something that you want to see how you can make use of with this component, this is the example to check out. Next up, we have something pretty cool. We have two characters doing an animation. Uh, they're doing the same animation. However, the character to the left, you can see sort of sways a little bit more. That character is set up to interact with the world when it comes to physics and interactions of objects colliding. And if we walk up to this control panel, you can see that we have a mesh that's spawning that's actually going through the right mesh because it's just playing the animation normally by the left one is actually interacting with its world. So if something happens to it, it's still trying to do the animation as well as it can, but things can interact with it while it's doing so. So that's that example. Moving on, this is the last example we have here. And this one is for character interaction. We have a character walking around with a different character in its arms, and you can see how it's being affected by that, by swaying its arm and legs and such things. And moving up to this panel, we can get it to run, and you can see how that changes how the interaction works between these two characters. And also, if we're walking away from it, the character is going to wave at us because it's very friendly. So I hope that was of interest. For those that want to see how you can get this to work or get the project, all you have to do is you go to the Epic uh, Launcher and from here you go to the samples. In samples, you can find the content examples. Opening up content examples, you can create the project. And from there, you can choose which version to use. Uh, this specific content example is available in 5.1. So choose 5.1 if you want to have that one. Uh, there are some projects that uh, are added and removed each different uh, version. So depending on which version you have, you'll get different uh, maps available to you. Once you're inside of there, you go to your content. I need to stop this one. Uh, let's see. There we go. And here in the project, this is the content examples project. You can see you have a folder for maps. Inside maps, you have a folder that's called physics control and this is the one that I demonstrated today. So hopefully that will be good enough for you to follow along today. That's going to be all. Uh, thank you for listening and sharing your time with me. Uh, keep on learning. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video leave a like. If you did not like it leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.